So in this lab, we'll demonstrate how to create a new composition in Adobe After Effects that is like a bouncing ball. So first you'll click New Composition. You can give it a name. You'll have to rename it later, but for now, I'll call it Bouncing Balls. Oops, Bouncing Balls. Um, let's leave these default settings the way they are for now. However, this, that indicates it's one minute long. Notice the semicolons here. So instead of a minute long, I'd like for it to be a half a minute long. So I'll type a, a three here for 30 seconds and I'll change the one to a zero. We're gonna leave the background as black because even when you change it here, it won't stay changed. So I'll click okay. Now I have a blank composition screen. This is my timeline down here. This over here will be my layers panel. And this is where imported items come. We're not really there yet. Up here is my uh, play buttons. So the way to begin this composition, I'll actually bring this down a little lower because I'd like to see some space above my stage. That's what this black area is called. Right now I have my selection tool, but I'm gonna choose my ellipse tool. If you click and hold, you'll be able to move down these tools to choose the ellipse tool. You wanna be sure that stroke is on zero and that fill is a color that you are happy with. I'm happy with yellow, so I'll keep it as that. So up here above my stage, I'm gonna hold shift and draw a perfect circle. You hold shift, click and drag, let go of your mouse, and then let go of shift. That will constrain the proportions so that it's a perfect circle. Then I wanna get my selection tool just to see what I have. This is selected. If I click outside of it, it's deselected. So what I need to do with this selection is put this anchor point in the middle of it. But to do that, I have to grab the anchor tool. So I'm gonna click the anchor point and move it to the middle of my circle. So now I'm gonna scooch this back up so that you can look at the layers panel. I just created a shape, so the default name is shape layer. I wanna change that name, so I'm gonna click, control click on it to get the menu and choose rename. I'm just gonna name it yellow because that's the color it is. These are the parts of my yellow shape. I'll open transform so I can see the position menu and when I click the stopwatch here, you'll notice down here beside position, it will create a keyframe. That's just establishing that this is the position I want that to begin in. So I click position and you'll see the diamond is here and there's a diamond here. From here on out, there's only two steps that you repeat over and over. You advance your playhead, you move your ball. So let's change the tool, getting your selection tool, then advance the playhead, move the circle. I'll bring it right down here to the bottom where a ball would land if it had dropped into the frame. Advance, move. Advance, move. So I'm gonna start spreading them out a little more here because that's what would happen in real life. I want this to be Newtonian. So that means that the ball slows down a little bit and it also means that it wouldn't bounce as high. So there's my last advance and I'll have it going off the frame. So you can see by scrubbing the playhead back and forth, you can see what the ball does. 
that's one way of looking at what you've done. I have to go slow here because my screen's not keeping up. Also, it looks like this didn't go far enough off the frame. There. So now I want to consider the uh, Bezier's. This may not be a term you're familiar with, but it's a vertex. So with this Convert Vertex tool, I can click once and make these sharp points in the same way that when a ball hits the floor, it bounces straight back up, right? It doesn't do any rolling on the floor. Yet, when it's up here at the top, it does have a bit of an arc and that arc would get wider and wider as the ball bounces more. So I've set my vertexes and again moving to my selection tool I can sort of drag this right and left to make sure I feel good about, I can drag it up and down too to make sure I feel good about how the movie's gonna look. And then with my playhead at the beginning, I can deselect the bouncing ball by clicking right beside it with my selection tool. And now I can click the play button just to see what my movie's looking like. There it is. I think it gets a little slow in here, so I might spread this out time-wise just a little bit. Let's see what it looks like now. That feels better to me. I'm going to click stop, put my playhead at the very beginning, and add to this by creating a second bouncing ball. It's really important before you create your second one to deselect the first one. If the first one is selected, these two balls will be too connected. So I deselect that, and I think I'll also collapse down here in my layers panel. I'll collapse all that. So now I'm going to get my ellipse tool again. I'm going to change the color. This time I'll go orange. And I might zoom out a little bit. That's control negative. So I can put this next ball holding my shift key a little larger. Now remember the second step is a little tricky. You're going to click on your anchor point tool. Deselect and then select it again so that you can find the anchor point and put it in the middle. Going back to my selection tool, let's go through those steps again, right? Let's set the first keyframe. I'll open transform, click the stopwatch beside position, there's my keyframe. Advance, drag. You always want to be sure you see this line coming out of it. Maybe this should be scooted over a little bit, more of an angle. Advance, drag advance, drag. Don't go below the line because a ball would never bounce below the floor, right? Advance, drag. If it's distracting to see that yellow ball, you can go down to yellow and hide that layer. You can also lock the layer to be sure you don't change it. Advance, drag. Maybe this one is going to advance out of the frame. There we go. I'm going to get my tool again, my convert vortex tool, make these into sharp points, make these into nice arches, And with my selection tool, I can even these out.
So now I'm going to deselect, put my playhead at the beginning, and look at my movie. Oh, I've hidden my first layer, so let's show that. They are bouncing very much together, so I'm going to bring my playhead to the beginning and select both of them. Oh, I locked that layer. There we go. Select both of them. Yeah, look at their arches. They're so the same. So maybe I'll change this one a little bit. This is the one I just did, the orange one. There, now those look a little different. Let's play it. Let's see if I can do something completely different for my last ball. But again, I want these to be Newtonian, meaning the way gravity. So I'm not going to have balls flying in circles through the sky. I'll create a last one that is red. Again, no stroke. Balls don't have outlines on them. And I'm going to create a big red ball. There it is. So with my anchor tool, my uh, anchor tool, I'll bring this in to the middle. Oh, geez, I've got to do my layer naming. This one was... First one was yellow. This one must be orange. I'm going to collapse it. And this one is red. Open it up. Set my position. There it is. See that diamond? This one is big and slow. All right, I'm going to de oh, I'll fix these vertexes. Deselect and play. All right, that's enough for now.